Hello and welcome to another one of our videos where today I'm going to be taking a quick look at the, a question I'm often um, posed and, and that's um, will swimming make my back pain go away? Um, so let's get into it. This is uh, something I come up with a lot where people tell me oh my back's sore all I need to do is just go swimming and that maybe have even been advised to do that and and in many cases that actually may actually help their back feel a lot better. Um, um, so what I want to explain is like how that happens and 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 why it's actually not the the solution to their problem which most people think it is so um, and if, if it is good for our back should we all be doing it so all right so let's get into how that how that happens and um, and the reasons behind why it, what it does so the reason that the swimming feels good for most back pain people is it places them in extension so you can see here um, this this lady sort of swimming uh, like as most of us unless you're doing backstroke but even still you're still in extension our body's sort of really stretched out the weightlessness of the water um, means that we're not sort of fighting gravity we don't have gravity squashing our joints together like pushing us down on our head towards our toes so we're actually sort of creating a lot of space through the the spine itself and the the weak back muscles for most people are actually because uh, you'll in order to swim like this you have to go into extension otherwise you won't get your head high enough you'd be sort of too, creating too much drag your feet would be um, you wouldn't be able to swim very well that's what you would see with someone who can't swim so this position places your spine into extension so that that's that's the real secret here that's actually telling you what you need more of um, this so this is very common to the people with that we see with bulging discs where they they have a flexion related back pain I'm going to explain what flexion means in a second but but basically understand that this is giving you a clue as to more movements, um, types of stretches you need, even uh, things to avoid as well. So you need to avoid anything that's flexion related and you need to be very wary of how you to move that things that do demand flexion. Because there's many things like bending over to tie your shoes up and picking something up off the ground that there's no other way to get into that unless you're using flexion of some degree. It just matters on how you're doing it. Alright, so but understand that swimming, which we're going to touch on shortly, won't change that. It's just giving you re relief, but it's not going to change the reasons you're in pain. So understanding what flexion is. So flexion is like a person that sort of sits in this hunched posture. Um, they may exercise in this posture, they may walk in this posture. They're just doing this all the time and, and basically the repetitiveness of it is what ends up creating a, a posture that's permanent like that. And this is where the discs um, basically getting pushed out and that's when you're starting to get problems like sciatica where it's pinching nerves uh, you're getting all sorts of radiating pain with that sort of nerve pain becomes muscle loss which makes it even worse than you know so the imbalances just get worse and worse and worse eventually neck pain becomes a result as well so um, so you can see how often how many people are in this flexion based habit daily doing everything so Swimming just is opposing this, but it doesn't change the fact that you just go back to doing it. So, so there's two problems with just relying on swimming to fix your pain. So, firstly, it doesn't solve the source of your problem, and it's not going to change how you move. Um, and so, and lastly, if if you in fact you're an extension-related tolerant person, swimming might actually exacerbate the problem, which I'll touch on shortly. So, firstly, if we look at changing movement. If you're a person that bends over like this all the time, it doesn't matter how much swimming you do. If you just go out and pick up your bag from the, the swimming pool change rooms like that, you've just if you're just going to be back to where you started. All your body is, needs is you're if you're already in pain, you're already irritated the discs a lot, all right, and the nerves and everything, and everything's already irritated. No amount of swimming, if you continue to do this, is going to change anything or picking up things with no poor hip movement um, and just bending your spine so this is where learning how to bend and do deadlifts in the gym where you've got a good hip action where you're I'm actually keeping my spine in neutral and not bending my spine is this is actually doing more benefit to me than just swimming um, understand this comes with a risk and you have to learn how to do it um, with skill before strength but but this is going to be a, this is changing a movement pattern where swimming is not changing any pattern 
Um, now the source of the problem, like we said, if you're constantly stretching, if you do sit-ups, if you're sitting looking at computer tablets, like iPhones, smartphones, all those sort of things, or just picking up things generally throughout the day, tying your shoes up, if you're doing all this, these are the source of your problems. All right, so you must remove them, you must identify them and remove them. Um, a, good, uh, a leading back pain researcher, Stuart McGill, I'd like to use his um, analogy here. This is like picking off a scab. So swimming might have sort of put a band-aid on it and, you, and it starts to heal and then you just go out and pick up your bag like that. Now you've just picked the scab right off and you're back to where you started. All right, so the swimming is not addressing movement habit dysfunction. Um, it also doesn't strengthen you. So swimming is really 75% arms so where a lot of um, back pain problems are probably 90% legs and pelvic problems um, so you're not really developing any strength and even if it was strength in your legs it doesn't develop it in the strength that you need it which is in the bending positions you know lunging rotational type things um, you're just not going to develop the strength in where you're lacking it so all you're doing is just the band-aid approach to relieving extension but the minute you stand up you're not strong enough to hold it so basically all that means is you just fall back into the old habits the minute you stand up again so you must apply strength methods to ensure your joints can maintain their alignment and integrity when you're moving um, now we mentioned before now it actually can exacerbate back pain so the person who's in ex too much extension which is the opposite of flexion intolerant the swimming position actually puts them into more of what they already have too much of. So usually these people will hate swimming anyway, but you can't just tell them to go swimming because it helped the last guy, because it may in fact have helped the last guy, but he was a different type of, of reason for the back pain. So, um, so this is where you, you really, you, you can't just have a template or a cookie cutter method to treat it. Um, these people won't need to do heaps of sit-ups or sit in like flexion to get out of it they'll need to learn how to move correctly as well and there'll be different reasons behind their problems um, lunging will be a key one for this person where they need to address their their poor positioning of their pelvis all right but so what are the best exercises well i can't really tell you exactly what you need because i don't know who you are and what your problems are but i can tell you that you will need to assess yourself um, and then the results of the tests will tell you what to do and where to look for. Um, usually you're starting with simple mobility of joints and basic stability tests, progressing to you know, isolated strength tests, and then lastly the movements of all the key movement patterns. Um, this is really you know, the secret to finding where your energy leak is so you can plug the hole. So, so in summary, swimming can be a good addition to help you in, in working through your, your, after you've done your assessment and and you're identified your source of your problem but understand it's not the fix it's, it's definitely not your solution you must identify your cause learn how to move correctly especially with bending um, and then lastly apply strengthening um, if you do those things then you definitely you're going to find the solution to your problem and you won't need to use back swimming for a back pain relief you'll do swimming for a fitness thing or for fun which is what it's meant to be um, if you want ideas on how to do assessments and how to talk about and find out all these things about movements that I was discussing, you can get a free report from our website. And for the in-depth back pain program, you can go to our website and, and download that as a 90-minute video with a book that comes with it on how to do everything from testing and then what to do with the results of the test. So, um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope it gives you a bit of um, clarity on what swimming does for you and whether or not it's useful. Alright, I'll see you on one of our next videos.